Sean Kantayashi. This little schnauzer is Miss Huckleberry. And we are excited to share this video with you because we're bringing you along on several outings and adventures. So join us through a variety of play dates, a vet visit, all sorts of things. Here we go. All right. There's Bama. He Hello, just Bama left boy. the puppy playpen. Jim and Bama are about to go on their adventure. Very Bama, exciting. we love you. Yes, yes, yes. Bama, you're going to have such a wonderful life. Oh, we're so excited for you. Yes. Off you go. We've got a puppy play date going on for sure. And all of the puppies are so excited to be out and about. They're getting to meet some new children that they haven't met before. And Tamara and Kim have come back for a visit with Wavy Davy Jackson. Everybody is getting some puppy playtime here. Yeah, that's right. That's perfect. You did a really good job saying her name. Oh, that's so sweet. Yep. Now throw it. Now throw it. Yeah. Oh, that was good. <laughs> They are doing so well. There's several things happening right now that are just great. You're not squeezing the puppy, but you're just gently petting the puppy. Good job. And look at this. You're doing the same thing. You're very gentle and you're petting the puppy so nicely. And oh, you're doing a great job too. Look at that. Mocha says, I love this. And Honeybee says, I love this. So they keep thinking that Honeybee is sweet tea. And the reason is because Sweet Tea lives with Grandmom along with Humble. So, you like Sweet Tea, right? Yeah, you love her? Yeah, I do too. I do too. And how about Humble? Do you, do you love Humble too? Yep. Even though they chase me around. Oh, they chase you around a little bit? Yeah, yeah. So, Humble is a penny puppy. And some of these puppies that you've been playing with are also Penny's puppies. And they are siblings to humble yeah. so we're keeping it all in the family here are about to get out the really little puppies you all have been asking to hold the little puppies right yeah, yeah. okay we're going to do it but what are what are we going to remember about holding the little puppies you don't squeeze them. that's right don't yeah. squeeze them you are so smart how did you get so smart <laughs> and you two because you're four that's that's Almost it five right yeah, oh, that's it. And you two are very smart, too. And I think you've been doing such a nice job of staying seated on the floor. Thank you. Because you've done such a good job of staying seated, I am going to get the little puppies out for you now. And I know each of you have been telling me which one you want to hold. But here they are. They're sound asleep. So they are ready to be held by little kids. Here we go. Yeah. So isn't this relaxing holding puppies? Yeah. Now the other puppies are in here playing too. They've been held a lot and they got the opportunity to play lots. So everybody's getting their chance. Aw, puppy energy. Yes, your boy is so sweet. Yes, he is. And as you say, he's got lots of energy. Yes. We were talking just a minute ago about the fact that I have been letting these puppies out to play but they really haven't earned the right, if you will, to have this much space. In this playpen, they know exactly where their potty pads are and they do their business on the potty pads. But when you let them have this much free space to run, they don't necessarily remember how to get back to their potty pads because I handpicked them up. I handpicked them up and brought them over here. So they don't necessarily know their way back. There aren't breadcrumbs, if you will, back to their potty pads. So this is, again, why I'm so... Um, adamant that when you get your new puppy home, you have a playpen set up, you get your puppy really accustomed to where the potty pad is, and then the puppy has to earn the right before it gets more space in your home. This is part of socializing very young puppies to help them think that um, children are normal and 
Uh, I love to have people wear hats and sunglasses and just all kinds of things to help puppies think that's normal. The quicker, the younger they are when they learn that, the less likely they are to be anxious when they encounter a child or somebody wearing a hat and sunglasses or a Halloween costume. Hey, next time you all come, would you be willing to wear a costume of some sort? Maybe a hat sure, or some... Plenty of those, don't we? Good. You guys have plenty of costumes. All right. So well, would you like to come back again? And maybe you could come back again and um, we'll have them come back again too because we're going to have another gotcha day coming up soon for a puppy. And maybe you all could come back and be a part of the gotcha day fun. Would you like that? Yeah. Okay. So it seems like you all had a nice visit and I am so glad that you came today. One of the things about being around dogs, when you stand up, if you're a young person, when you stand up, you have to just stand up really slowly and then you have to walk really slowly. Dogs don't like it if somebody gets up and starts running right away. So you're just gonna stand up really super slow. Would you practice? Let's practice. We're gonna stand up super slowly. All the puppies have been put away. So you're gonna be able to walk normal. But now that all the puppies have been put away, you can just walk that way there you go and you just walk slowly and then see all the dogs are super calm but if a young person a two-year-old three-year-old starts running in a herky-jerky motion that can really cause a dog to get um, concerned about what's happening now they're saying my dogs are starting to say hey wait why are you leaving why are you leaving no come back Tamara and Kim just said that is the cutest thing right there, just watching the puppies as they are watching what we are doing. You've seen this setup many times, but you've probably seen it from a slightly different angle. So part of the reason why we have this setup like this is so that the little puppies can watch as the older puppies and the mom dogs are doing their obedience routines because puppies learn so much by watching. So Tamara and Kim are getting to have a hands-on experience here. Kim, what do you think? It's cool. <laughs> Jackson. Yes, touch. Yes, sit. Good job. Okay. So the <laughs> there's a word that when you say it, you're also spelling it. Okay. Okay. That is our release word, meaning we're done. Ah. <laughs> so I need not say that. Well, it's it. We could change the word. You could change your release word, but that is the word that means we are done. And you can tell they have enjoyed their play date. They're all sound asleep. And this is the way it is here a lot. Puppies sleep a lot. So in the first couple of days, if you get your puppy home and you're thinking to yourself, why is this puppy sleeping so much? Well, it really is normal. We do our training sessions four times a day here, and we try to time them when puppies have just woken up from their nap and gone to the bathroom, but it doesn't always work that way. Like right now, I'm going to pick Wavy Davy Jackson up so that he can play some more. I am so excited. I understand they have brought a list of questions. I love questions. And one of the things I know about you two is you ask curious learner questions. You ask the kind of questions that imply you are really interested in taking great care of your puppy. You are so committed to your puppy. You know the difference between like curious learner questions and like judgy kind of questions? Yeah, those are hard, aren't they? But I know you're gonna ask me some great curious learner questions. Let's yes. dive in. Okay, so I love beautiful grass, but I know that certain products are not healthy. And Tamara and I discussed that. She wants no treatment to the grass and I want treatment to the grass. So. Oh, I have a solution for you. Thank you. One that's gonna work for both of you, I think. Okay. Let me show it to you. A friend of mine, Bill Grunban, owns a company that specializes in organic and natural treatment for trees, shrubs, lawn care, tick mosquitoes, fertilization, 
And you can see his website here. Here's his phone number. And the website is Organic Plant Care. What is that? Yeah, LLC.com. On the website here, you will see they have a section. And if you scroll down about organic plant care and treating trees, lawn, shrubs, all of it. So check that out and see if that's what you're and looking And if you are looking for a product that you can spray onto your pet when you are going into an environment where you're not in control of how things have been treated, but you want to make sure that you won't have problems with fleas, ticks, and mosquitoes, you'll see on my own website, svcctoys.com, I have a series of my favorite products here, including this flea and tick, mosquito, et cetera, treatment that can be used on the dog as well as on your yard. So I'm always learning, always open to being curious, and I have discovered this product called Vets Best. It is a natural product. It is for fleas, ticks, and mosquitoes. It comes in much larger, like gallon size, that can be used to treat your grass. But you see it can be used on the dog, too. Let me have you look at this product, and we'll check to see if this might be the solution. We definitely buy that and try that, because we did think maybe we'll just kind of block off a portion of the yard that we will no longer have treated. I see. And okay, so for weed control and yeah. grub control, yeah. I understand. And so in my neighborhood, you know from where I am that my, my neighborhood is very meticulously yes. landscaped, right? Yes. And so the days that the landscapers are here to spray the weed control, the grub control stuff on, I don't take my dogs. But you'll also notice I have that whole patio area and that whole back area out there. Right. They don't treat, they don't, nobody ever sprays anything out there, which is why if you go look out there, there are weeds. Ah! And I look at those dandelions and I just smile at them and I say, welcome, because you get to stay here. Right, right, I am not right. treating you because I don't want my dogs to be exposed to that stuff. So I understand both sides of this. Okay. I understand the desire to live in a neighborhood that looks really pretty. Yes. <laughs> That's yes. important to me. But it's also important to me to make sure I'm not exposing my dogs to chemicals that they don't need yes. to be exposed to. Yes. So we had a four foot fence in our backyard, which is pretty large but we have so many things that hop over the fence, a fox, a deer. So we had the four foot fence taken down and had a six foot privacy fence put up in preparation for Jackson to come home because we just don't want stuff jumping in the yard and you know, fun. Oh, there's so life. much I love about you too, <laughs> but this is just yet another example of how your preparation work for getting your new puppy included having the six foot fence put in before yes. the puppy came home. So Absolutely. well done. Thank Great you. job. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm so impressed. <laughs> now it looks like you've got a list there. Are there more questions on that list? Yes. Um, and actually you kind of talked a little bit about the heartworm. This leads into my question because you've mentioned that you don't give the lepto vaccine or heartworm you don't do heartworm preventative i personally right. do not give the leptospirosis vaccine there has been some evidence that it can cause some neurological problems mm -hmm. but if you live in an area where leptospirosis is prevalent mm -hmm. and your dog is outside in an area where it could drink the okay forgive me for what i'm about to say the urine of foxes or rats or something that might be infected with leptospirosis, then you need to do it. Okay. So um, last summer I had somebody get a puppy in New York City and I said, I can't even imagine why you would need a leptospirosis shot. Mm -hmm. Well, she went to the vet, told the vet what I had said and the vet said, your breeder doesn't understand that there are lots of rats on the streets in New York and you do need a leptospirosis shot. So she called me from the vet with the vet there in the room. And I said, well, of course, if your vet is telling you to get a leptospirosis shot, please do. You, your vet knows the area that you live in better than I do. Okay. Now, if I had dogs that were running around outside in my 
Like I used to live in a property that had 14 acres behind me and my dogs had access to that. Now that would be a different story. Right, yeah. I might get the leptospirosis. Right. Okay. Yeah. But one of the breeders that I have purchased some of my breeding dogs from mm -hmm. has in her contract that if you give a dog a leptospirosis vaccine, it voids all contract and all relationship with her. I'm not that strong, obviously. Okay. You've seen my contract. My contract yeah. does not say anything like that. My 10-year uh, genetic health guarantee is good even if you give the leptospirosis vaccine. Okay. But it's just me sharing with you my best practice and what I do. Now, was there a follow-on question about that with heartworm maybe? Yeah. 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 What's, so, what's okay, your... heartworm is caused by flea, or excuse me, by um, mosquitoes. And so that product, that uh, I mentioned is good at also repelling mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. I've personally never had a dog that ha had heartworm. Mm -hmm. I've never had a dog that had tick-borne issues. But again, a lot of that has to do with the way I'm raising mm -hmm. my dogs. Even by the way, when I had that 14 acres of big space behind my house, I still never had a dog with any of these issues or problems. And those dogs regularly ate Okay, cover your ears if you're sensitive. Right. They regularly ate, you know, poop from deer and bunnies and so forth. And somebody asked me the other day, hey, Sean, is it okay my dog just ate some rabbit poop? Yeah, that's fine. In fact, it probably is very enriching for their gut microbiome. So I have no problem with that. Yes. Because we've got a couple rabbits that have houses in, and our in the yard. Our other dogs used to eat deer poop. And I was like, why are you? Because it's great for their <laughs> gut microbiome. Yes. Now you'll ask your vet. You'll say, "Hey, is there anything going on in the region? You live in Maryland, mm -hmm. yes. and you know, is there anything in this local area around us that would cause you to say there's a concern with my dog eating um, the poop from um, rabbits or deer or whatever else is in your right?" Mm -hmm. um, and and they'll tell you. Right. Sometimes you will notice dogs itch their ears. And they might do that. They might scratch their ears because they've just been groomed or because they have a collar on and the collar is new to them and they're scratching this area because the collar is, they're getting used to it. But I highly recommend that once a week you wash out your puppy's ears with a really good quality ear cleaner. I have a couple that I'll show you here that I've gotten from my own vet. So these came from my vet's office, but you'll also, here, this is what I'm talking about, right there, what she was just doing, that scratching the ears. That's very normal. And a weekly clean out of the ears is appropriate. You put some of this in the dog's ear and you can use a cotton ball or something like that to just dry out the ear. I usually let my dog shake their head a lot after I put this in because the shaking of the head can dispel. If your dog has an ear problem that needs to be treated, maybe there's too much yeast in the dog's ear. How does that happen? Well, if the dog's ear gets water in it and the water doesn't dry, the dog can get a growth of too much yeast in their ear. And so this is the product that I recommend. You can get it from your veterinarian if that happens. So if your dog is itching its ear a lot, you probably need that. So there, they, see they're hearing me talk about itching and they're saying, okay, we'll show you what we mean. Now I have not seen him itching his ear at all prior to that today, but it was just maybe the energy of me talking about it. But if I did notice it regularly, I'd first start off just by cleaning with a general ear cleaner and I'd see if that solves the problem. And then if that doesn't solve the problem, I would graduate to this product that helps get rid of the extra overgrowth of yeast. Okay, Sean, we're on the list to get another puppy from you as well. And um, we're just wondering what the protocol is for when we bring the new puppy home and Jackson will be a little older. Will we have to separate them? Or, you know, what's, how should we introduce the new puppy to Jackson? So um, Jackson will be able to be introduced to the new puppy right away. Oh, oh, good. Oh, and good. we can even help with that. So okay. you'll bring Jackson here. 
we will help Jackson get to know his new it's brother. His brother, yeah. brother. And uh, if I if I recall correctly, we're doing we're going chocolate this time, yes. a yes. liver yes. color. Yeah. Yes. So you're on the list for a chocolate liver colored boy. Yes. And when we have that for you, and you say yes, mm -hmm. then you'll start being able to come visit him, just like you visit Jackson. And at some point, we'll have you bring Jackson, and we'll oh, introduce them here so they get used to each other. But there's a variety of things that we can do to tee it up so that it works really well. Now, I think there was another part of that question, which was about um, if your puppy hasn't had all of its shots yet. Yeah, I think yes. you were headed in that direction too, yes. what happens there. Well, one of the things about me as a breeder is that I buy your puppy an amazing immune system. Okay. In other words, monoclonal antibodies. You've probably heard me talk about it more than you want to hear me talk about it. But the fact is when they are about 30 something days old, I take them to Quakertown Vet Hospital and they uh, inject into the bloodstream monoclonal antibodies so that your dog will not get the scariest thing, the most life-threatening thing that can kill puppies and that's parvo. So parvovirus. So the reason that most breeders will tell you don't put a puppy down in the grass, don't, and I still say, still follow those guidelines, mm -hmm. but you won't have any problems with your puppy being with him, even if he's going outside okay. because of the monoclonal antibodies that your puppy got when he was here. Got okay. Excellent. Great. Oh, such great questions. Curious learner questions. We love those. Oh, say they loved it. They, they love the slide and they'll get up on the slide. That is all about um, who's higher. Oh. Who's higher. And um, they will often sleep on the slide. Really? As a, I'm high up. I'm, I've got the highest up position. So Harley, you remember Harley? You met yes. his parents when you were here before. Yeah, it was gotcha day for him. Well, his mom asked me yesterday, why does Harley try to sit on my head? <laughs> I said, oh, he's trying to get the highest position to show he's in charge. Oh, so and it's normal behavior. And by the way, I'll point out to you, I am letting this puppy, I am letting Jackson gnaw on my hands. But he is not biting down. Right. He is just gnawing gently. Now, if he were to start biting a little too hard... I would make a loud ouch noise, a squeak, a squeal noise, and I would jerk my hand back, and he would look at me horrified like, uh-oh, did I do something that hurt you? And I want my puppies to love my hands. You saw me earlier doing work where it was all about following the hand, following the lure, right? So you don't want to scold your puppy for touching or gnawing on your hand. Is that making sense? Yeah, you want your puppy to love your hands. But he does have very sharp little teeth. And the way I use my hands, I don't, he, can't, he can't chew on me by the way I'm putting my hand there in his mouth. But he likes playing with me that way. So that works out very nicely. Yes, it does, Mr. Jackson. So we've had dogs before, and we always thought we were good doggy mommies. But now... Since we met you, we feel like we're in puppy prep school also and learning all this new stuff all over again or stuff we never knew to begin with. So we thank you for that. Oh, you are most welcome. And you're right. It is a joint effort, this puppy prep school. Yes. I'm a big believer. You know, we can train your puppy, but then you've also got to be willing to do your part in right. learning too. And I'm so grateful to you that you have that <laughs> curious learner mind. I love it. Thank you so much, Kim. Woo! <laughs> we're laughing here. Mr. Jackson just did a poop and we're saying, oh my gosh, look at that beautiful poop. That is, that a, is a solid, good looking, gorgeous <laughs> poop. And most people would be laughing saying, what are you right. crazy? Right. But yeah, it's a really beautiful one. Solid, yeah. nicely formed, clearly made from good food. Yep. Good job, Says Jackson. I'm very healthy. Thank you very much. Yeah, good job. The top of the slide is a very common sleeping spot for both my old older dogs and my puppies. And you might be thinking, why? Well, it raises them up a wee bit. And so if there's any vying for who is the pack leader at the moment, the pack leader is the one who is up highest, which is why 
little Mr. Harley likes to get on his mommy's head. <laughs> and so that's one of those funny kind of things. And all you have to do is just pick your puppy up or your dog up and take it off of your head and put it back down. And you're in essence saying to the dog, nope, I'm the pack leader here in those moments. And when they are playing with each other, you'll see that there's a regular sort of rough housing thing going on where they're trying to be on top. Whoever's on top is the pack leader. And so he's saying, I'm being the dog pack leader right now. And he will come sit next to me. Jim had a lovely time delivering Bama to Colonial Williamsburg, Virginia. And he just handed me this as a gift from Bama's family. Let's find out what's in here. Wow, how exciting is this gift? It is a book and 120 plus recipes. The Forever Dog Life. Dr. Karen Becker and Rodney Habib. Oh, I'm going to enjoy this. It's Monday morning, bright and early. Brianna has arrived very early this morning and the puppies are ready. I love the way Brianna has set this up. So we've got the big puppy playpen here and then she's set up a area so that she can do the training where both sets of puppies can watch what's going on. And today we are starting with honeybees puppies. All of these puppies will get four sessions of training today. Oh my goodness, look at Miss Libby. So cute and look at that tail wagging. She is one happy girl. She has such a fabulous personality. She's always joyful and always eager to engage. Yes. So uh, as I was saying, all these puppies are getting four sessions today. So Brianna will be doing uh, several with them. Devin is coming, I'll be working with them. So they will be getting lots of attention. I have some coaching meetings this morning and I have an eye doctor appointment later today. So I won't necessarily be here in the puppy Montessori school all day. I'll be coming and going, but fortunately I've got a great team to help me. So we'll see what we can capture today on our vlog style video of what's happening at SVCC Schnauzers. This little Libby is so adorable. And she's getting so good at watch me. That And she also just loves her cuddles and love and look at that tail going. She says, oh my goodness, I'm so happy. She has so much personality and you can just see that personality come right out with that little tail. So playful. As I'm doing my work in my business, my coaching work and my team leading things, Huckleberry is laying right next to me here. And I keep a really close eye on her because she will be going into labor anytime now. Part of what I love about my own office is how bright and sunny it is. And it's also a regular that my puppies, my dogs, will come lay right in the spot that's bright and sunny. Hi, Huckleberry, you're a pretty girl. Yes, you are. I've got eight puppies here today. These are Dazzle's four puppies, and I have Honeybee's four puppies, and we are all ready for their DHPP shots. These four, Dazzle's puppies, are getting their second shot, and Honeybee's puppies are getting their first DHPP shot today. So we're in the waiting room here. We're actually in our own room, and you can see the puppies are very eager to explore. Dr. Savore will be walking in the door any moment, and we'll do an exam on everybody and a DHPP shot. Hi, Sailor. Hello, Sailor. Hi, Jelly. So we've got 
Chance and Jasper here too. And honey, these puppies are doing so well in the carrier. They're just all snuggled in. And while we were out in the main waiting room, several people came over to say hello. Lots of folks who work here will often come out and say hello. So Pat, for example, she has this beautiful English accent. We always love talking to her. She came out and did some puppy cuddles for a little while. I always find all the folks at Quakertown Vet Hospital to be so kind and nice. They want very much to help and to uh, provide really good customer service. It is extremely busy here though, all the time it seems like. And so uh, sometimes the need to take care of lots of things, yes, they have a need to take care of lots and lots and lots of stuff going on. Since it's a 24 by seven uh, emergency hospital as well as a standard veterinarian office. Yes, that's right. The other thing I appreciate, or I should say, Another thing I appreciate about Quakertown Vet Hospital is that they are actively involved in lots of clinical trials. And so they often are at the cutting edge of what's happening in veterinary medicine. We've been waiting for about a half an hour, I think because they're very, very busy today. But I also think this is fabulous for my puppies because they come and they learn how to get very relaxed in an environment where there are noises, sounds, um, smells that they aren't familiar with. And you can see they're very relaxed, including this group over here, all settled in. If I open the zip top though, they will probably jump up, but you can see very quiet, relaxed, easy going. Yeah, so we're happy to be here. Yeah. Hi, pretty. Huckleberry looks so cute like this as a big teddy bear. I have a suspicion, though, that with her puppies coming, it would be better if I make this haircut much shorter so that we're not having to comb or brush her every day over the next several days after her puppies arrive. So I'm thinking about it right now, taking this coat down a little bit shorter. Huckleberry, you are so adorable, and I just love her coat. Her coat can be done in a traditional schnauzer and look straight, or as you see here, teddy bear and somewhat curly. But I'm gonna change the whole look right now, and we're gonna call it the mom look. Huckleberry, you look so cute. She did such a great job on the grooming table. Yes, you did, Huckleberry. It's pretty early in the morning and Huckleberry and I are in my office working. The other puppies have activities going on downstairs, but I've got my eye on Miss Huckleberry. I don't know if you can see it, but when I talk to Huckleberry, she keeps wagging her tail. Her tail is moving, but it might not be obvious from the angle that you're looking at. Hi, Huckleberry. How are you doing? Are you feeling okay? Hmm. Getting ready for those puppies to arrive? Yes, your belly is looking really nice. But Huckleberry, I've noticed something. Your milk hasn't come in yet. I'm wondering about that. Hmm, I have to figure out what that means. The topic that I get the most questions about on my YouTube channel is what do I feed my dogs? When do I feed my dogs? How do I feed my dogs? And I am so excited about this book that Bama's parents shared as a gift to me. So it's got 120 recipes and it's all about how to feed dogs in a healthy, natural way. I have been devouring this book, really enjoying it. Over the next several weeks and perhaps months, you will see me bring alive the content from this book and what I am doing on my channel because the values and the mission in this book really reflect what I am also committed to, too, here on my YouTube channel. I'm back at the store called Doggy Dow and Cat's Meow in Hellertown, Pennsylvania. 
and I am looking at several products that I'll be telling you about here in just a little bit in this video, but I wanted to give you a sense for some of the kinds of things that you can find here. So raw frozen diets, all kinds of supplements and treats, and this just gives you a feel for Doggy Dow and Cat's Meow. I got four products today at Doggy Dow and Cat's Meow in Hellertown, Pennsylvania. Let's look at each and I'll explain a little bit about why I decided to get this food. Today I got a question from Gussie who owns Harley. She took him to the veterinarian for an appointment and she explained to the veterinarian what she's feeding him. Most veterinarians have not been trained in nutrition and so they want you feeding a kibble. And so when they hear that you're feeding a homemade stew, they may imply that you are probably not balancing your dog's food well enough. And so these kinds of add-ins would probably cause your veterinarian to say, the stew plus this add-in is acceptable. And I use NuVet Plus, but I also like to experiment with other products. So uh, these two, this is a green superfood premix paradigm and this raw vibrance. Let me show you what is in the raw vibrance. So that looked really good to me. I did not buy the versions of this that had peas and other things that impact estrogen levels in dogs. I personally avoid that. So you can see the ingredients and I am going to give these products a try. I also got the probiotics and enzymes. Now I like to use Fortiflora. I also like to use kefir and yogurt, but if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you probably know I like to try a variety of things and I like to expose my dogs to lots of different um, protein sources, fruits, vegetables. So I am also going to be trying these. Want to show you what each of these look like when they are opened. So this is a powder that gets sprinkled into the food and this is a chew. If you are wondering about the cost of some of these supplements and what I paid at Doggy Dow and Cat's Meow in Hellertown, Pennsylvania, you can see here the cost of these items. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. We also appreciate your comments below. Please make your comments five words or more in order for it to count in the YouTube counter. This is my website, svcctoys.com. If you have more questions about our little schnauzers, you will find there is a whole Q&A section here on my website, including what makes a SVCC schnauzer so special. And if you scroll down to the bottom of this page, you will see there's a whole Q&A section about schnauzers, as well as lots of information about why schnauzers are really great puppies, pets, why they make such beloved family pets. So you can learn a lot more here on our website if you would like to do so. And see these mini schnauzer Q&A? Come check it out.